bloody shower in the stock market. Not again. In this video, I will talk about the top five strategies that I use to keep those diamond hands, hold all, and not get affected by these bloody showers. Welcome back to my channel where I help working professionals build additional income streams to build wealth and of course, enjoy the finer things in life. It is week 78 of the dividend challenge, which I deposit at least 250 dollars, I almost said thousand dollars, two hundred and fifty dollars into the stock market every single Monday and Wednesday, rain or shine, no matter what happens. Now let's take a look at my three portfolios. Let's start with the Weeble portfolio, which right now I have $669.50. And you can see right here, I currently have two holdings. One is Ken, Kenan Holdings, and another is Tapestry. K-E-N, this is actually one of my free stocks. And if you also want to get your free stocks, just simply go to my info box and, or the pinned comment below, and you can just click on that link to claim your free stocks. And truth to be told, I don't really use Weeble actively anymore because I just found it to be a little more complicated than what I want for a mobile app. And so a lot of times I just use this platform to get free stocks, which I also encourage you to do because there's nothing wrong with getting free stocks. Please do not leave money on the table. I urge you to not leave money on the table. I really cringe every time I see people leave money on the table. And now uh, let's also take a look at another function that Weeble has, which is paper trading. So for my paper trading, I currently have 1.5 mil and I'm up by 54.22%. You can see uh, two of my stocks are down, McDonald's and Ultrix are down, whereas Work and Tesla are up. And this is really blindly stock picking because we have been in a bull market for so long, even for my blindly picked stocks, it is already doing so well. But this also goes to say that whoever succeeds in the stock market, like in this current stock market, it really does not mean anything much. Why doesn't it mean anything much is because we have been in a bull market and it's almost like any random stock that you pick is bound to win temporarily in the short run because every single stock is going up in the short run. That's why I do not trust these like new traders popping up and telling you that they're genius stock pickers because it is just the trend. The whole market is going up. Does not mean any specific person is a genius stock picker unless this person has like 10 plus experience with stock market investing and has a proven track record. So just take everything with a grain of salt, especially those epic trading you see online because who knows if it's even real. And now that we've taken a look at the Weeble portfolio, let's take a look at my dividend investing portfolio with M1 Finance. So this is my M1 Finance portfolio. I also named it Cherry Pie because I just want to have fun with this portfolio. And currently I have $44,219.01. I'm up by $11,959.74. And this translate into percentage is 46.71%. In my cherry pie, I have tech, real estate, finance, bond, healthcare, consumer, and telecom. I did make some adjustments. For example, I did remove utilities because I only had maybe 3% of utilities in the past and I just did not really pay attention to utilities. That's why I don't find the need to really uh, have utilities in my pie anymore. And my goal, my passive income goal is to have $1,000 in dividend income every single month. Currently, I maybe have around... 50, $60 every single month. It is still a bit far from my goal. So I will continue investing into this portfolio, rain or shine, no matter what happens in the stock market, just to keep on uh, drip drip dividend reinvesting and keep on dollar cost averaging. And it doesn't matter if the market goes up or down because I am a dollar cost averaging every single week, I can also buy into those dips. And you can see it, my highest earning is from Tesla. Tesla is up by 432.46%. And I also have Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, and Google in here. Another slice that I have is real estate. I'm also personally very bullish in real estate because no matter what happens in the world, businesses need a place to sit, right? Businesses need a site. And of course, people need a place to live. And so real estate, in my opinion, is something that never truly goes away. That's why I'm also very bullish about real estate. And there is a real estate income, Simon Property Group, NRZ, LTC. This is for senior housing, a well tower, and store capital within my real estate slice. And you might also be wondering, why are you bullish in tech? So first of all, a little disclaimer is that I do work in the tech industry for privacy reasons 
reasons I'm not going to state which company I work for, but I do work in tech and I, of course, am very bullish about the industry that I'm in. And you also want to invest in stuff that you understand. Because I do work in tech, I am exposed to a lot of information about tech, definitely not insider information, just general information about tech. And since I'm also curious about tech, I tend to want to invest in the things that I'm naturally curious about. And so this same advice applies to your situation too. If you are in a specific industry and you know more about that industry, definitely consider looking into investing in that industry if you want to go into stock picking. And now that we've taken a look at the M1 Finance portfolio, let's take a look at the Fidelity portfolio, which is currently my biggest portfolio, my biggest, uh, public portfolio and it has also experienced a bloody shower in these couple days. So this is my Fidelity portfolio. Currently I'm at $207,357.23. By the day I'm down by $2,311.28, down by 1.09%. My one year rate of return is kind of sad, it's less than 1%. Let's just take a look at my positions to see what is going on. So I currently have Square, which is a new purchase and it, it, it did go down after I bought it. So let's look at that later. I also have Planet 13, I have Tesla, I have Palantir, I have Revolve, I have Elf, I have Tapestry, I have this Fidelity Zero Total Market Index Fund, and I have Facebook, Disney, MasterCard, Visa, and this is just my cash, $5,000 in cash, and BABA, uh, 310 shares. Let's take a look at what activities I have done. So in my history, you can see that I've invested some uh, just, I guess this is just uh, interest from my money market. And there is also Revolve. I bought some Revolve. I bought some Revolve? What? When did I buy Revolve? How come I don't remember this? Interesting. I don't know when I bought Revolve. This is creepy. And I bought Disney? Oh wait, this is Q1 2020. No. Okay. 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 Wait, no. Let's go to the past 10 days. I'm sorry. It's getting late. Okay. So I did buy a little bit of Tesla just to make it a whole number. So right now you can see that I currently have 10 shares of Tesla. Let's just get into the summary positions and Tesla. I currently have 10 shares. Before I have like 9.7 something shares. So I did buy more Tesla just to make it a whole number. And then let's take a look at my activities. I also bought Palantir. So um, Palantir did drop by a lot, like 7% we're talking about. So I did buy more Palantir. I might make a separate video about why I invest in Palantir, but in the past for one of my dividend investing videos, I also talked about some of the reasons behind why I bought Palantir. And then there is also my Visa dividend reinvested. And I also sold some MasterCard because MasterCard was kind of my safe stocks, but it does not really truly fit in this growth portfolio, in my opinion, because I do want to get my hands on some more speculative and risky stocks, but not too risky, right? And then over here, again, more of my just money market. And I also transferred some money into this portfolio. I sold some Visa because again, Visa is one of those safety stocks and I also reached my long-term capital gains mark. And so that's why I sold some. I also sold some 3M. Again, 3M is kind of like the safety bet kind of thing. So I sold my entire 3M holdings in here, but I do have 3M in my dividend investing portfolio with M1 Finance. And I also sold Starbucks because it's kind of like a safety bet thing that has reached the long-term capital gains tax mark so um that's why i sold it and i bought some square and i bought some planet 13 because it did go down by a lot and more palantir and i also sold some fidelity zero shoulder market index fund just to free up some money so i can buy some of these growth stocks and so let's take a look at today you can see square is down by seven percent plan 13 and down by 5.91 percent tesla down by 4.84 percent everything looks really down except for baba which is up by 0.79 percent baba has been down for the past couple of days so overall you can see i'm only up by just a little bit 3.85 percent in my total gain and loss and in terms of my total gain and loss palantir is the only one that is red right now i am currently down by a thousand dollars in palantir but i'm really not too worried because I believe this is just the normal volatility of the stock Palantir because there are a lot of people who are just buying it for fun and not really looking into the stock. That's why the stock price has really been pumped up by a lot and I do own a fair 
fair bit of Palantir. So again, putting money where my mouth is, I'm holding onto Palantir and I'm not panic selling. And you can see uh, with the Fidelity app, you can also see the 52 week range, which allows you to see where does this current stock price land in terms of the 52 weeks that have previously gone by. And you can see Palantir is definitely towards the lower side, whereas most of my other stocks are towards the right. Baba is also towards the lower side because according to Fidelity, Fidelity's rating for this or equity summary of this is very bearish for Baba. So, yep, this is, um, of course, is not the reason why the stock price is this low, but there is definitely some consistency between the current stock price and what this stock was rated based on analysts. Now, before I move on to the strategy of how I maintain these diamond hands, if you want to learn more about my private wealth community, head over to my info box or a pinned comment below because I have a free group that will dive deeper into wealth building. This group will give you tips and tricks on personal finance, income stream creation, and of course, networking opportunities with like-minded hustlers. Again, make sure you click that link in my description box or pinned comment below. Now with that out of the way, let's get into my top five strategies of maintaining diamond hands. The first strategy is don't look. Yes, I'm serious. If you are not creating these stock market investing videos, there's really no reason for you to look at the stock market every single day the moment you open your eyes because that would just cause you to have more panic when you see bloody showers like the one we experienced these couple days. So the number one strategy, which is also the easiest strategy because if you're lazy, this shouldn't be a problem, is just don't look. Stop looking at the stock market. Stop staring at it, right? And the second strategy is remember your why. Yes, it's such a buzzword, but it's so important to remember why you bought certain stocks. For example, the reason why I bought Alibaba is because it is a very diverse business. It is doing super well on the financial statements. And as a Chinese person, as a fellow Chinese person, I also know how powerful Alibaba is as a corporation in China. And so these are all the reasons that caused me to look more into Baba. And of course, after seeing the numbers, after seeing the uh, execs, after seeing the management team, I also felt more confident in my decision of investing in Baba. And these won't be affected by just, you know, bloody showers or some analyst viewpoint on the stock because I've done my own analysis. And so you always want to remember your why, why you've decided to invest in a specific stock because that way you can be sure to have your diamond hands and not sell off early and not just panic sell. The third strategy is keep yourself accountable. Accountability can come in many different ways. For example, me making these YouTube videos, I am keeping myself accountable because it will look really bad if I just sell off everything when there is a bloody shower because of course, I have to still create videos and I'll have to shamefully reveal that decision to all my subscribers and viewers, even though there's not a lot, but you know, it's still accountability. And if you don't have a YouTube channel, you can still keep yourself accountable by just having friends that share the same investing strategies and mindset, right? If you have friends who are diamond hand friends who like to hold all, who like to do long-term investing, then of course you can keep each other accountable this way. The fourth tip is just focus on something else. There are so many things in life. You don't have to just stare at the stock market every single day. The moment you open your eyes, maybe you can reconnect with an old friend or maybe you can socialize with people online or, you know, go on Reddit, but not the subreddit. Wall Street Buds because that is still stock market investing or trading or day trading or gambling. So maybe you can look into getting other hobbies or just having fun with life, you know, having fun in life that is not limited to stock market investing. And of course, number five is watch and thumbs up. Smash that thumbs up button for my YouTube videos. Well, other than that, the true number five, of course you still have to do that, but the true number five is listen to the stats. So statistically speaking, the more you touch your portfolio, the more you buy and sell, the worse you'll do in the stock market. And I know it's very counterintuitive because you might think, hey, the longer I spend doing something, shouldn't I be a master of it? And shouldn't I 
perform better, but you still have to keep in mind that not only do you statistically perform worse when you frequently buy and sell, you also have to pay taxes when you make money, whenever you sell and make money. And so when you keep buying and selling, there are a lot more chances that you'll pay a lot more in taxes. So also keep that into consideration. Now we are somewhat approaching tax season. Now at this point of the video, you have seen my portfolio performance for the week. You have learned my top five strategies in terms of maintaining these diamond hands. If you haven't already, join my private wealth community, which dives deeper into personal finance, income stream creation, and of course provides you with networking opportunities with other like-minded hustlers. I also have created a personal finance course right inside my private wealth community so definitely check that out in the info box or a pinned comment below while you wait for the next video i create other videos about personal finance stock market investing and luxury living so be sure to check out these two videos as well thanks for watching today's video and i'll see you in the next one